to the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Let it not look like preachers are just wasting their time on members. You preach and cry and pray after 10 years and in one day, a herbalist calls someone and he will ignore all your sermons and series because they are looking for results. Can I tell you, do not downplay how far people can go when they really need results. They can come and tell lies and say it happened because you pray for me. But even you, you will know you are not connected to that miracle. I hope you like what I'm saying. Though. The power of God. We have no right to tell people, don't go to herbalists. Don't go to this. When for 50 years, the person can bring the evidence that followed his serving Satan. I served Satan for 50 years. And they, are, they maintained the madness of my son. They did this one and that one. Now we are proposing to them the reality of a superior kingdom. And they are asking a question we must answer. Where is the proof of the superiority of this kingdom? I sincerely believe in the power of God. I do. I do. This is more than falling down. This is, we are not talking of falling down and standing up. The power to change systems. To shift the climate of systems. Mm. An open display of the power of God. That when people are in trouble, they begin to rejoice when they see a church signboard because they know that they have finally found refuge. From the rising of the sun to the setting of the sea. Your name is to be hallowed From the rising of the sun To the setting of the sun If we are to be honest with ourselves, every family represented in Africa and represented here, there must be somewhere in your family, nuclear or extended, where Satan is trying to take advantage of the absence of the power of God. This is an assignment upon you to go back and say, hey, hey, we are not revisiting those altars again. Can I tell you, When people become desperate to see results and we keep giving them explanations, a time will come they will put us in a category and know that they cannot have results and get up and go to all kinds of demonic things and Satan is more than ready to welcome them. This is a charge to not, this is not just to ministers of the gospel. Every believer, you must pray and say, Lord, let something from heaven come upon me genuinely. It is almost a shameful thing to actually believe that miracles can be stage managed. Why fake what can be real? An open display. It is my prayer that for everyone who has come, that between now and March, may God do something that you will know is a signature he signed upon your life. That it will be impossible for anyone to hear it and just sweep it under the carpet and casualize that miracle. May it happen for you in the name of Jesus.
please sit down an open display of the power of God are you ready for number four I'm just touching them number one prayer number two regular convergence of believers for the purpose of training maturity number three an open display of the power of God supernatural manifestations of his power over the lives of God's people are you ready for number four how do we ignite and how do we preserve territorial revivals the intentional mentorship of younger believers and ministers to ensure continuity the intentional mentorship of younger believers and ministers to ensure continuity the intentional mentorship of younger believers and ministers to ensure continuity second timothy chapter 2 and verse 2 the intentional mentorship of younger believers and ministers to ensure continuity second timothy 2 and verse 2 this is the fourth key that is responsible for igniting and preserving revivals and the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses he said the same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also can i tell you the moment there is a generation that does not receive that button the devil has he, you, the generation can, it does not matter who did well before that time intentional mentorship of younger believers and ministers to ensure continuity no man should leave the earth without reproducing at least twice of you you know there have been territories where you will have seasons of seasoned veterans of the gospel men and women of god who are with power but sometimes they make mistakes and we see this even with the god's generals respectfully speaking that many of them were focused at giving and pouring and maximizing their destinies and they forgot that one day they will not be there or one day they will not have that strength and the devil knowing that they had already neglected the generations coming he now allowed them knowing that time will naturally fade them away and then the people who should now carry the batons satan went and grew with them patiently so that by the time you turn back now you can see someone respectfully speaking whose father was a foremost evangelist and you are wondering where is the mantle in that house because they made a mistake can i tell you if you are doing anything great don't just focus on the moment you must focus on posterity this is a mistake and this does not just this is beyond just ministry like fivefold ministry even in business is why in africa we almost do not have third and fourth generation anything people start things and it dies with them in their lifetime you travel to the west and you can see you can see businesses that are 200 years old 300 years old because they understand the principle of continuity my dearly revered mentor dr miles monroe one of the last books he wrote in his lifetime before he died was passing it on the principle of legacy you see life operates like a clock the hand of the clock and when you are captured in the moment of your relevance you can forget that one day prepared or not there will be need for continuity jesus as mighty as he was doing miracles and the rest knew that he would not be there physically forever and while he was doing that he was also raising and building the disciples who would later be apostles forget those who betrayed him everybody will not betray you there will always be someone faithful if you can find peter james and john who are faithful you are good enough the intentional mentorship of younger believers 
this is why we see that our the, the church today is plagued with all kinds of things especially from younger ministers because there is no intentional you see let me tell you if you are not there to help someone rise you can't come and meet them when they are risen and claim and want them to they they, they, they will only answer to who was there when they were rising are we together now you can't come and expect that people who have suffered and labored whoever was with them and patient enough to believe in their future their allegiance will be to those people are you hearing what i'm saying now this is very important you can look at the average young minister and you can see the gaps no matter how sincere you can see the gaps is the reason why respectfully speaking we can have younger ministers who can talk about fathers insult anybody because nobody showed them the long-term consequence of those kinds of things all in the name of speaking your mind you see all these ordinances in the spirit people keep breaking and the trouble is that except the mercy of god intercepts there is casualty that is waiting for them and the danger is they won't suffer it alone is someone learning you want to ignite territorial revival you want to preserve it we must trust god for grace don't look at children and say they are small when will they come how were you before Every troublemaker today was a child yesterday. Can I tell you this? Every national problem was first a regional problem that was not managed. Every regional problem was a community problem that was not managed. Community problems are family problems. It, it started from the neglect of someone somewhere and then it started growing. Every armed robber came from a house. I hope we're still together. Philippians 4 and verse 9. Philippians chapter 4 and verse 9. Intentional mentorship of younger believers and ministers to ensure continuity. Can we have it? Okay, let me just pull it up from here. Philippians chapter 4. and verse 9 here's what it says those things which ye have both learned and received and heard and seen in me it says do and the god of peace shall be with you those things which ye have both learned and received and heard and seen in me do and the god of peace shall be with you every great leader and everyone who god has given an opportunity to rise to any elevated position whether in ministry whether in business we have a responsibility by god to see to it that as much as possible those committed to us are genuinely mentored and that they become people of stature and balance not lacking in anything can i tell you no matter how we travel around preaching the gospel and blessing people it is the way you build your home that you'll be rated i learned this you know i would look at our fathers and find out that no matter where they travel they make sure they are around building their people until i had the privilege of talking with one of our fathers and i asked him what is the secret behind this and he opened my eyes to it you can go and preach in a crusade three days and finish and leave them and never see the person you preach to again but the one who is with you here if you do not build them you can be a global success and you can be a failure within your assigned place let me give you an example if i give you an assignment and the assignment is to pick this spray this tray and take it to god's servant the man of god and you come up here and sweep this place and worship and roll on the ground and even change this pulpit and you don't pick this the reward that is kept for you is written reward for taking this would it be said you have done well you did not do evil but you did not do well all the same so while we seek to be global as wonderful as it is we must understand by divine rating jesus had to give account of those that were connected to him 
in John 17. He had to give, he said, all that you have given me, I have kept and none is lost. He had to explain why Judas was not part of them. Except the son of perdition, and it was not my incompetence, is so that scripture will be fulfilled. Are we together? Intentional mentorship of younger believers. I was saying it in the morning. Um, <laughs> a gentleman met me some weeks ago, I think, and he came with a large poster, joined the prayer line, and you know, I was sweating already, tired, hoping to finish so that I'll go home. And here is a gentleman standing with a big poster, and I thought it was a prayer request. As soon as I opened it, I saw his face for president. Of, of Nigeria now, I didn't know what to, I said what, what in the world how do you now for and look I'm not looking down God can use anybody but please we know God I'm not talking of a visionary young man you you can you, you just it's not it's difficult to say these kinds of things because it looks like you are looking down on them but I looked at him and he was with the poster large poster and I was lovingly trying to help him and you see God does not leave people there are line upon line and he was determined I know the problem of that boy the problem is who raised him there was something they did not teach him about the law of process the consequence of it is that conviction many years ago in Zaria a gentleman came and met me he was wearing a regalia I finished and I saw a group of people and he stood there and they said they came for impartation and release. I said, where are you coming from? They said, we're coming from Kano, true story. I said, who are you? He said, I'm Jesus. I looked again. I thought he was just claiming I'm one with Christ. I mean it, jokes apart. There was a gentleman who stood near him who said he was John. And No, true story. I could see the zeal and the sincerity they now came to me and they said by revelation whatever voice spoke to them and said i am john so like i released jesus they now came i could see the sincerity this is not a wicked boy there is danger when you allow believers to freelance their understanding about god growth is methodical When people freelance their spiritual understanding, there will be gaps. And provided their hearts are open to close the gaps, that is fine. But most times that gap is garnished with pride. And you will now not find room to be able to help and close those gaps. Intentional mentorship of younger believers and ministers to ensure continuity. A man of God once called me and said, every time he's preaching, a gentleman will just get up and disturb the service with prophecy. I said, send him out of your church. What does that mean? He said, no, no, I don't want it. I said, this is not insecurity. No, you have a spiritual responsibility to guide the understanding of your people. There are things when, we, when you permit their unwritten, you, you have given access to superior versions of those things. Are we together? If someone is staying under your roof, he should serve your God. If he's coming for weekend, that's all right. But if you will stay beyond a certain place, if you don't believe the God that gave me that roof, leave my house. It took a lot to bring that presence there. Hmm. Again, church is quiet. When we say mentoring people, I'm sorry to say this and please don't feel offended. There are many parents who only give birth and stop there. It is sin to just give birth to children and add, keep adding problems to societies. Are we together? People just give birth and give birth and allow those children. They are not home two, three days. Nobody cares. They return after the fifth day. You are back. You are welcome. Your food is in the kitchen. They disappear again for two weeks. Can I tell you, anybody who is a parent, that thing that happened at the point of marriage is not just joining two people. A grace came on you to be able to raise your family. You can take advantage of that grace. That is the truth. There is trouble for any system that does not have a structure for continuity. We have seen ministers, we have seen business people, we have seen captains of industry, something just 
impedes or incapacitates their ability for efficiency and there is nobody they can trust again a man of god can be locked up maybe somewhere and not able to come to church and literally he cannot find any other sound person within his circle and he can say stand for me your name is to be hallowed ah. one of the reasons why we say jesus was so successful is because of us that he could train us and trust us so much and trust that the church will get the job done don't focus on your success alone you must trust god for grace to raise and reproduce your kind as much as possible number five the third key that ignites and preserves revivals across territories is influence hmm. god's people must rise to prominence so as to preserve the interest of the kingdom influence influence this is sadly a a part that has been neglected in the body of christ we believe in evangelism and growth and then someone just sits in a position of power and rubbishes all our prayer and fasting with one policy influence is very powerful influence that god's people must rise to prominence so as to preserve the interest of the kingdom acts chapter 18 from verse 9 and 10 if there's any one of you here who is fighting or rejecting influence i announce to you with every sense of love it is an attack don't reject influence it takes evangelism and influence to enthrone christ across the hearts of men and across territories acts 18 9 and 10 please look at this then spake the Lord unto Paul in the night, in the night by vision, Be not afraid, he said, but speak and hold not thy peace. Why? 11, 10. For I am with thee, and no man shall set on thee to hurt thee. What is the advantage? For I have much people in this city. I have much people in this city. There is a spirit that tries to bring an aberrated concept of holiness to mean you should ignore anything that elevates you to a position of notoriety in an attempt to show that you are serious with God. That may not be an accurate communication of the truth. I can tell you influence is powerful and influence is necessary. It's necessary for a preacher. It's necessary for an individual the more you raise and have people of influence the more the purposes of god given to you can be defended especially in the wicked world that we live today someone can buy a land and another person can come just knowing that a church will be built there can come and bully people away from the purposes of god i believe in influence i made up my mind as a man of god that by the privilege of god's grace i will never only raise a people who love jesus as far as their spiritual commitment is alone i believe in influence that god will grant me grace to raise strategic people are we together strategic people people of influence a man of god wants to travel for a program they just cancel the visa and refuse and you are what, what are you a thief To step into the nation, they harass you there again, and you, you face a plethora of embarrassment simply because of the what is influence can manage many things. I'm telling you, influence can create efficiency, it can influence can work in partnership with the Holy Ghost to give you peace, especially in a wicked world like this. There are many prayers you will not need to pray, influence can answer them. I hope you believe what I'm saying. There are families that do not have anyone that God has risen. Whatever Satan wants to do with them, it just takes mercy. I believe in influence. And in the name of Jesus for everyone who has come here, may it please the king. Pastor Nat said something very powerful. The first song he was going to raise. 
he said that he's found out that the more he lifts jesus christ and allows him to be glorified the more he gives him an opportunity i said that's it he got it and i if i be lifted up from the earth i will draw all men that one day you'll be sitting down and someone will call you that is the prayer request of many people they will say i want to see you and you will think they are scammers you say i really want to see you god has sent me to come to you can i tell you this there are gatekeepers across every system and when you can capture gatekeepers for jesus you have captured the territories it is true do not reject influence it is powerful it is an effective tool for igniting and preserving revivals let me give us the last and then we'll pray are you ready for the sixth now an open display of love by the church an open display of love by the church the sixth way we ignite revival and preserve it is by an open display of love to the church by the church love beyond cultural biases love beyond religious biases matthew chapter 5 and verse 45 it is important that we demonstrate the love of jesus he says that ye might be children of your father which is in heaven for he maketh his son to rise on both the evil and on the good and send that rain on the just and on the unjust i remember there was a year we did something in zaria after there was there was a crisis that happened within that period and we decided to do a peace concert and then we set up something and invited all the people whether you're a christian or not just come it was a free medical outreach i was shocked and humbled almost in tears when i saw the amount of unbelievers women coming with their hijabs they would they now had a legitimate ground to enter the church they always wanted to but there seemed to be an unwritten thing saying stay out there now love is a language all men understand you don't need to be educated to understand love love is a language everyone understands and you could see the people crying bringing their children and i said oh there an open display of love with no prejudices with no whatever it is we can't do everything but we can do something i'm telling you the truth there is evangelism that happens by love there is a way you can wrap the gospel wrap it so much and serve it with love in fact the bible says love is the more excellent way of doing anything preaching by love is better than preaching singing with love is better than singing ministering the power of god with love is better than just ministering i show you the more excellent way hallelujah for most of us we score well on all the five points except love the moment someone comes and is not a christian you almost kill the person and then if he says no 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 no, it's just my name that is implicating me i'm a child of god you suddenly change hypocritically and say oh really you are welcome and the person says no i've seen what i needed to see you are not a christian times can i tell you there are many people today who need to come to the fold they may not listen to your gospel but try love and see the wonder working power of love everybody cannot do everything but everybody can do something that from where you are you can do something these six keys i have learned are the keys that control the ignition and the preservation of territorial revivals it is impossible for a territory that submits to these principles to remain barren of anything god you know it it is almost it is almost like a norm that when the move of god comes it just dies down and fades away it fades away because the principles of its preservation have not been taught the move of god can remain for instance heaven 
For instance, heaven. There's never been a time in heaven when the purposes of God and God himself and Jesus his son is not the central focus. Satan tried to bring all kinds of things and he was judged. If heaven can be that way, we can cross every territory and make it to be in the earth as it is in heaven. It's a painful thing for people to be in their old age, 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s and they look back and they see to they look at several parts of, of the world today places that were centers of revival some of them they've destroyed every monument everything god and they built all kinds of things may it never be that one day we'll turn back and say we used to serve god we used to pray here abuja used to be a place where jesus was glorified uh -uh. What is my assignment tonight? To stand in partnership with the grace upon the man of God, having discussed the subject of restoration, personal revival in the morning, and now territorial revival. My assignment is to lead us to pray and to help us experience the life and the power of Jesus genuinely, even if it is for one person to experience the reality of this Jesus so that you know that he's not a theoretical Jesus that you can be revived and refired tonight and you can leave this place knowing that the things that are believed are not cunningly devised fables but they are truth hallelujah I became tired of church I became tired of religion very sincere people but I would listen to preachers preach and I would watch people oppressed sick downcast dejected and they would so vocally talk about a Jesus who could change things and in my innocence I would sit down and say God are you this difficult to reach your people there's something wrong the propositions that are given about you it tells that you are a benevolent God you are loving you can you are apt to reach down to people but what is responsible for that distance it led me to that pursuit days became weeks weeks became months and I said Lord I'm not looking to be a preacher all I want is your presence and answers to this I do not want to stand before people and not be able to give them an explanation as to why they are unable to see your power and i said lord whatever it would take please work on me i'm not in a hurry to move build me well so that i can do my best with the gift of this life you have given me to represent you so thoroughly this has been my call and i'm inviting you to stop nominal christianity average careless powerless christianity that cannot bring glory to the name of the lord and contend for something genuine there's gonna be a great awakening there's gonna be a great revival in our land there's gonna be a great awakening and everyone who calls on Jesus, they will be saved. There are still territories that are unreached. And they have been so frustrated, they hate anything Christianity. We need to bring the gospel of power once again. To tell them Jesus saves, Jesus heals, Jesus delivers. There are many people who have tried this Jesus thing for want of words. And many of them are packing up a lot of things. After the pandemic, many people were not Christians again. They just said, you know what? I've been looking for a chance to hate Jesus officially. And now this pandemic gave me an opportunity. And with flimsy excuses, they justify their refusing the things of God. You try to talk to people about Jesus. Oh, 
their lives are full of bitter and painful stories and they credit their pain to Jesus where was he when my loved one died where was he when my my certificate has been lying like a piece of paper for decades I have prayed and cried for a job I have watched unbelievers use divination to get jobs and promotions let me announce to you that Jesus is alive let me announce to you that Jesus is still exalted ah he is exalted the king is exalted on high. I will praise him he is exalted forever exalted and I will praise his name he is the Lord forever his truth shall reign heaven and earth rejoice in your holy name Exalted, my king is exalted. He said, Awake, thou that sleepest, and Christ will give you life. Let me speak to someone. That was why I started with the subject that we started with yesterday. Can I tell you? Don't get used to pain. Jesus is still alive. Don't get used to failure. Don't get used to poverty. Don't get used to defeat. It is true that Jesus died, but for how long? He only died for three days and he resurrected in glory. Triumphed over death. Shut the mouth of Hades. Can I tell you this? We serve a living God. I know that the world today looks like is Jesus there. There are all kinds of things. But let me tell you sincerely, the one who sits upon the throne is not scratching his head wondering what to do. He is almighty. Now unto the Lamb upon the throne We raise a sound We raise a Please rise up on your feet. For he is God and God alone Hallelujah, Hallelujah. Now on to the one upon the throne. We raise a sound. We raise a sound over the nations of the earth. Hallelujah. This will be our anthem to the nations. Hallelujah. 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 assignment to stop the nations from thinking Jesus is dead we have an assignment to stop the nations from thinking that this faith work is a powerless one and I want someone and anyone to join me in this campaign that we must let the nations know that he is alive we have the singular assignment of re-presenting Jesus he's been misunderstood we have to reintroduce him. I'm going to pray for you. I have just a few minutes. And 
for many of us you have come here tonight and you have come with burdens you have come with yokes you have come with all kinds of pain it will be injustice to this message on revival if we just round up and share the grace and let you go back like that without giving his majesty an opportunity for a triumphant entry in and through your life and your destiny but please allow me to make a call and to reintroduce this Jesus perhaps there's someone here in this place tonight you came here without a definition for your life frustrated and you're saying apostle I've been hearing this thing about Jesus and I'm honestly not interested give your destiny a chance tonight and there are others who are saying apostle I love Jesus but as it is my life has gone haywire I truly need to rededicate my life before I do the general prayer I just want to take a minute or two I truly believe that there must be someone in this meeting there must be someone following from across the globe and you are saying apostle if you will give me a chance tonight I need Jesus I need him as a matter of life and death there's nothing to be ashamed of I'll count five and I want you to leave your seat and please come and stand here. Don't wait for someone to come before you come. You know that you need him sincerely. Win that war of destiny and come. I'll begin my counting now. One. Let's celebrate them as they come. Someone is coming. If you're coming, please rush. Please can you stand, madam, or dear? When they come, they should just stand for space. You don't have to kneel, my friend. Please stand. Celebrate them. They are coming. Come. Come to Jesus. Apostle, I don't know if I'm saved or not. Come. You join them. Shepherd of my soul, I give you full control. Wherever you may lead me, I will fall. I have made a choice that I will listen for your voice wherever you may lead. I will. Listen, I believe that you are doing this with understanding and with intention. There's nothing to be ashamed of. Some of you are crying. You're standing before Jesus, the one who loves you gave himself for you he is able to give us a new beginning this is true revival when we make him the epicenter of our lives and our destinies then we are ready for a life of beauty a life of color and a life of grace it's my joy and my honor to lead you to this Jesus not another one the same Jesus who died exalted today as Lord and Christ Please may I request that you lift your right hand if you can, high above your head, and I'd like you to say this convincingly, you are not reciting a poem. Say, Lord Jesus, tonight I have heard your word. I believe that you are the Son of God. I believe that you died for me. I believe that you rose again for my justification. Right now, I receive eternal life into my spirit i receive the abundance of grace even the gift of righteousness and i declare that you are my savior you are my lord and you are my king the power of sin satan hell and the grave is broken over my life i am the child of god i go forward ever and backward never amen let me pray for you thank you father for these ones they have come making this decision and the bible declares that as many who will come to you you will in no wise cast away by the authority of scripture i declare your sins forgiven i commend you to the ministry of the word and the ministry of the holy spirit that you'll be grounded and established in righteousness and i declare that from tonight you go forward ever and backward never he gives you a new beginning welcome to the family of faith in jesus name i pray
Now, please, I just want you to move to my right. My left, which is your right. Let's celebrate them as they go to meet the counselors. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. Salaskade bashkana kata branda kate katos. Kate branda kata pakotos koto prekate kale kata. The phase of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.